be with you again this morning. Thank you for joining me. God bless you on this new morning in God. I want to thank you for, for popping on to continue on in our series of An Army Rising. Um, we're up to part three, session seven, believe it or not. Uh, authority to Shift Nations, number two. Um, and it's remarkable that God gives imparts to us his authority to shift nations and we're amazed at that and you know Jesus said all authority has been given to me Jesus won it all and then he said now go um, you know it's been given to me now out you go I send you and he sent us with this authority and it's an authority that comes through our relationship firstly with him and I want to pray for you Ephesians 1 17 again because it that is the our authority comes through relationship so here's his Ephesians 1 17 I pray that the father of glory the God of our Lord Jesus Christ would impart to you the riches of the spirit of wisdom and the spirit of revelation to know him through your deepening intimacy with him. I pray that the light of God will illuminate the eyes of your imagination, flooding you with light until you experience the full revelation of the hope of his calling. That is the wealth of God's glorious inheritance that he finds in you, his holy one. I pray that you will continually experience the immeasurable greatness of God's power made available to you through faith. Then your lives will be the, an advertisement of this immense power as it works through you. Hallelujah. Lord, thank you that you make us an advertisement of your power. Lord, I pray that we will be great representatives of your power demonstrated in the earth. In Jesus' name, yay, yay. Okay, so last week we talked of five areas that Jesus has imparted to his authority to us and how we can use these to demonstrate his authority and make shifts in the spiritual realm. I'm sure there's more than five, but five, five main ones that I've identified um, where Jesus has imparted authority to us. And the first one we talked about last week was that he seats us in the heavenly realms and gives us authority to enforce heaven on earth through our prayers and decrees he takes us into heavenly authority seats us above everything that he conquered conquered he seats us with him and then he says now rule in the midst of your enemies rule and bring heaven to earth so we looked at the authority that he gives us through seating us with him in those heavenly places so today i want to talk about more ways that Jesus imparts this authority to us. And firstly, I want to talk about the authority through the power of covenant. As we look at this, we see that the blood of, through the blood of Jesus, we enter into the new covenant. Um, in the blood of Jesus on the mercy seat of the tabernacle in heaven forever gives us access to the Father and to the kingdom of heaven and the heavenly realm, the spiritual realm. And, and this covenant is available to all who believe. We simply have to believe. And then we, we come into covenant with Jesus. And as with any covenant, what's yours is mine and what's your mine is yours. And, and we don't have much to give the Lord. And yet we give him our whole lives and he gives us the realm of the kingdom and his authority. And he says to us, okay, now 
everything that's mine is yours. Um, my enemies are your enemies, my as well. And that, but we already had an enemy, the same enemy. And so he gives us this power, this authority to uh, that, like Jesus did, to overcome this same enemy. Jesus sa said, ask whatever you will and it will be done for you. We ask in faith according to his will and Jesus himself is the guarantee of the covenant. That's what covenant is. Whatever we want from this spiritual realm, from the, the riches and resources of the kingdom of heaven is now available to us. And so that authority is available to us. So through the power of that covenant and the power of authority, we can make change in the earth. It's available to us. And we can ask for provision, for healings, wonders, miracles, and power over all the power of the enemy to make change into the earth. And not just in our lives, but in our families, in our regions, in the nations, and in the land, and in, in the whole earth. It's, it's remarkable to get our heads around it when we see the extent of the authority that this covenant of heaven gives us. There's a powerful picture though in the Old Testament of the old covenant. And, and we know that the new covenant supersedes that. But let's see a picture of what the old covenant did and how it brought down authorities that had set themselves up against the knowledge of God. In 1 Samuel 5, 2, we see that... Um, that the Ark of the Covenant, God's Ark of the Covenant that was with the people of Israel had been stolen by the Philistines. Israel was at war. They were under Joshua where they were taking the land and they were trying to take more and more land. And I believe Joshua died at this time. And now they were going to battle for more land. And the Philistines were always their enemy. But And they went out. And this particular time, they were having trouble. So they said, oh, we'll go and get the Ark of the Covenant out of the temple and we'll bring it with us to the battle. But they had forgotten to ask God. They did not have a relationship with Jesus, with God. And so they, they went into battle and the ark was stolen. And in 1 Samuel 5, 2, it says that the Philistines carried the ark of God into their temple of Dagon and placed it beside an idol, the idol of Dagon. But when the citizens of Ashdod went to see it the next morning, Dagon had fallen with his face to the ground in front of the ark of the Lord. So they took Dagon and put him in place again. But the next morning, the same thing happened. Dagon had fallen down before the ark of the Lord. This time his head and his hands had broken off and were lying in the doorway. This was a picture of the power of covenant. Here we see the ark of the covenant, the ark of the presence of God taken before and into a temple belonging to another power, the, the, to Dagon, it was a deity in that land. And that deity could not stand in the presence of God, couldn't stand in, before the old covenant. So much more can the presence of our enemies not stand before the new covenant that we carry so as we carry our new covenant, as we carry Jesus, as we carry with us faith in Jesus and the presence of the Lord and his presence with us, then we, have, we take that authority into situations where other rulers of spiritual principalities and powers may be in control of those areas. 
but at the presence, because of the covenant that we have with the Lord, at the presence of the Lord, those authorities will fall. And we have seen that happen as we have in, gone to areas and enthroned Jesus. There has been a shift in the spiritual atmosphere and, and Jesus has been enthroned and other authorities that had been in charge in that area we can we see come down because we see a ramification in the natural and i spoke last week about something that happened in africa uh, another example from a time in africa was when we went and we had communion and we enthroned jesus um, at in tebi at where um, the the Israel had had contentions with with Idi Amin he, back in the eighties. He had he had confiscated an airplane of Israel. He had taken captives. He'd taken hostages, and Israel said, "No, we're going in to get them." And from that, to, and Israel did retrieve the people. Um, but what happened was there was no longer any diplomatic relationships with, between Uganda and Israel, and it hadn't been for 40 years. And yet we went there, we took authority, we took communion, we took the ark of his presence, and we prayed. And in that, in that time, in the next couple of weeks after that time, uh, we heard on the news that Israel and Uganda had again begun diplomatic ties and were established a relationship again. That's, that's uncanny and, and that's just not coincidence. When the authority of God comes into a situation, when he, the authority of his covenant is seen in a situation and Jesus is enthroned, then it shifts the powers and forces in the heavens and, and the things that Jesus now wants on earth, where he wants relationships established, where he wants nations, once divided, united, those things begin and can begin to happen as we go on assignment with God. So the, the covenant, the, the authority of the covenant that we have produces shift and change when we honour Jesus in those ways and take his covenant into an area. And, and I talked about the power of communion in the New Testament. The authority of the covenant comes and is a reaffirmed through communion. Um, this is the symbol of the covenant that Jesus made with us. We take it and remind the Father, this is the covenant. We, we're re-establishing every time. We're reiterating, there's a covenant here. There's a covenant between you and me, Lord. We're taking communion here. The blood of Jesus and, and his authority is, is our covenant we have a covenant. What's mine is yours, Lord. What's yours is mine. And as we keep reaffirming that through communion, we gain authority and, and we, we gain faith in the authority that we have in that covenant. And through this power of communion, we align ourselves with heaven. And again, God fight, then fights for us. God is God allows us, comes beside us when He takes us um, into situations, and He says, "Fight this one, fight that one, bring that down, um, or bring down the power of the enemy that is oppressing you." And that's what it's about. It's about lifting oppression, not just for us but for those around us and for our nations. The oppression of the enemy is fierce, and yet the Lord has given us authority to set the people free, to set ourselves free from this oppression. And 
That, that's why we are warriors. Every one of us, everyone who call on the name of the Lord, we become warriors because we do live in this oppressed situation. So, But the Lord has made you well able to stand and fight. He has given you authority to, to cast out the enemy and to establish his freedom for yourself and for those around you, and for the nations. We can't back down at this time. We can't back down as the enemy rages um, because the Lord has all authority. All authority on heaven and earth belongs to Jesus, and he's given it to us. So we stand in that authority, and we don't back down. And taking communion just enforces that in us. You can take it every day. Take communion every day and reinforce that authority and that covenant and, and rise in your faith every day to say, no, this is the covenant. This is the freedom I have, all freedom, and I'm going to stand in that. We can't back down anymore from, from, from the enemy because we know what we have. We know the authority that we have. And we can, symbolically, we can enforce this, this authority of communion, um, even for land and regions, by pouring out the blood of Jesus, the, the symbol of the blood of Jesus on, a ter on territories to establish his kingdom. As the blood cleanses our bodies and our homes, it also cleanses the land we're living on. We have many testimonies of prayer prayed over barren lands that, that when communion was poured out, it expelled the enemy in some way and the land was no longer barren. My good friend, Athy, um, who used to live in Bundaberg, she had an example where someone asked her to come and pray over a large tract of land that they the produce they, they were doing well everywhere else with their crops but this track of land they just could not produce what needed it, it just wasn't producing the crops very well at all and so Athy went to pray and asked the Lord what was happening and she saw some some demonic influence there and took authority over it got rid of it and from that time on, that track of land began to produce crops again. And we've seen this happen. It's, it's staggering the authority that you possess if you will take time to ask the Lord. Don't just accept things on face value. Ask the Lord, why is that happening in my circumstance? Why is, is this always continually coming into my life? What, where is there a hook there somewhere? Does the enemy have a hook there somewhere that, that I keep getting hooked into? And just take up your authority and refuse to live under those ploys of the enemy and refuse. And then as you get authority for your life, you are very well equipped to go, I see that that shouldn't be in my community. That shouldn't be happening at my kid's school anymore. I'm going to take find out why that's happening and I'm going to take authority over it because you will find that there is a spiritual reason behind most things. Some of it is just happenstance and circumstance, but where you see a, a cycle that continues, you can be sure it's a spiritual reason that the enemy has authority or permission to get into there and you go in and you, you rescind his permission and take back the authority of heaven in that situation and, so, and say, no, this belongs, because I'm involved here, this belongs to Jesus and we're going to get the blessing of heaven, not the enemy. So look for those situations. Look, and the Lord will call you into them. The Lord will show you. He'll highlight them and say, I want you to go and change that situation for the good. 
we that's what we do that's we get to do this so one of the other things that God gives us authority in is the power of forgiveness and that's another way that we can take up the power of Jesus and demonstrate his life on the earth and his authority it's through the power of forgiveness and Jesus Jesus came with a sinless life and because of his sinless life he imparts to us a righteous life and and he we can, we then get to release the power of forgiveness and and even before his death, because of his sinless life, Jesus used the power of forgiveness to set free and heal. We see it in Luke 5, um, 19 to 22. It's the story of the paralytic man who was lowered through a roof in front of Jesus. And they, they couldn't get to him, Jesus, any other way. So... They, his friend, the four friends broke open the roof and lowered this paralytic man down. And Jesus said to him, your sins are forgiven, rise and walk. And it really annoyed the Pharisees. He was like, how can you forgive sins? How can you say they're forgiven? And uh, Jesus said, what's easier to say, I forgive your sins or rise up and walk? Jesus had that the, the authority that healed that man was the authority of his sins forgiven. And we again have been given the privilege through the power of, of the blood of Jesus and his righteous life to then say to people, Yours, I forgive you. I forgive you. And we can say that and release people from their sin and release them into healing. And so this same power of forgiveness that applies personally can apply to family, to people groups and to nations. And we can receive those that power um, and use it. So we, again, an example, um, many years ago, I, I guess I'm giving you large examples. So this one's from a few years ago. A team from England and a team of, the, from, of prayer warriors from England and Australia got together to resolve the issue of why, of the fact that England did reject and send everyone to Australia to the penal colonies and Australians forever were annoyed at England. And, um, and that... That long-standing irritation, that long-standing root of unforgiveness that brings judgments and, and causes one to think not highly of the other, um, was that, that power was broken. And there, we, we see it demonstrated in continuing ongoing relationship with England, even to to this current situation with, with Scott Morrison um, forming again a, a pact with England and, and America. You know, there, there's now an, an ongoing and continuing ongoing relationship that um, is not going to break down anytime soon because it's for the benefit, God does this for the benefit of his kingdom he has a plan he has a purpose in everything and here he is uh, orchestrating a, a move of God across the nation and he's causing nations to be in relationship to foster his move of God his move across the nations and we just keep working with him and keep as far as possible those channels open in the spirit so that God's will and purposes can be done on the earth. So anyway, I have run out of time again today 
And so next week we'll look at another two areas that um, God has given us authority through so that we can be confident and rise in our authority to affect shift and change. Let me pray. Lord, thank you for everyone watching. Thank you for everyone who wants to shift and change. Lord, I thank you for courage and boldness for everyone listening to rise in the authority that you have given them and shift their circumstances and shift their situations into the realm of your kingdom and to see your goodness in the land of the living. Hallelujah. You have a good week. I'll see you next week. Amen. Thank you.